we're looking at zero day uh, profit targets by IVR. It's a market measure sponsored by the CBOE. Thank you to the CBOE. Let's take a look. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, a lot of people are uh, looking for zero day content. Yes. And this one's a good one. For My sure. guy Jack on uh, Twitter slings them. You're on those. You've seen those. Yeah. 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 This, I mean, this is the new thing. Everybody's it's a new world. Yeah. It's a new world that was basically just created out of thin air. Yeah. What well, was it a year ago? Year two years ago? Maybe two that they started with the the actual zero day. Well, they had the yeah they had the Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Monday, Wednesday went to the one days. Yeah, that's when everything just. You think they'll have one days for like zero days for everything at some point? I would think so. Maybe almost like becomes top ten stocks. Yeah, yeah, it becomes like binary almost. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, lots to discuss here and lots of cool insights. So, talking about zero days by Ivy Rank. So the novelty of active liquid zero-day option markets is giving us all a chance to learn how best to trade them together. We were just looking at the VIX one day, yeah. single digits, craziness. Um, sometimes it's not like that, though. Sometimes it's super volatile. But we're going to take a look at a couple of different uh, trade setups here. But implied volatility and volatility is incredibly central to options trading and a natural metric to look to for determining what to trade and how to trade it. Uh, so, of course, when credits are higher with higher IV rank or implied volatility, should we be satisfied with keeping smaller portions of them kind of knocking Ooh. down our profit targets, which we will see. Uh, we'll get that answered in the next slides here. So looking at the study, two years of data, which doesn't seem like a lot, but this is 10 minutes every 10, every 10 minutes for, the, for two years. So it is quite abundance of data. Yeah. Uh, looking at zero day SPX options. So this sort of thing can be, if you're looking at XSP, similar idea. Uh, SPX is 10 times higher of a price than XSP, but if you're trying to knock it down in size and uh, extrapolate. But looking at zero day premium at 9 a.m., plus or minus five minutes every day, using $20 wide iron condors with short 40 or 20 delta strikes, or $10 wide iron flies. So a bunch of different trade setups here, looking at a bunch of different results, examining closing winners at 10% of credit received, 20% of credit received, and 25% of max profit or credit received. Losers were allowed to expire or held through expiration. Uh, filter the results by SPX IV rank at the market open from 0 to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 25, and 25 plus. Ivy rank and SPX and the e minis doesn't get too crazy unless you have something crazy happen. Yeah, you, you kind of have those outlier moves that skew it because like yeah. an Apple or a Tesla or something, you have binary events and, and things where volatility can kind of spike in the short term and right. in the market, ETFs, SPX, indexes. You get those couple, you know, tariff tantrum is going to skew volatility for exactly. the next year. So like right now, SPX is at a 12, yep. Ivy rank, but the VIX is at 16. So mm -hmm. it gives you an idea. So like if you ha if we had a VIX at 25 or 30, SPX, Ivy rank would be significantly higher. Uh, but we're kind of hovering in that lower IV range, especially now. Mm -hmm. All times are Chicago, Central Time. All trades are assumed to exercise at mid-price. Results are presented as win percentage and the mean P&L. Beautiful. Let's take a look. Um, okay, so looking at iron flies first, ten dollar wide wings. Looking at taking profits at ten percent, twenty percent, twenty five percent, and then of course doing nothing. Yeah. Um, there's some interesting data points here. I think for me, looking at uh, the second to the highest, the IV rank of fifteen to twenty five, you have very similar. Uh, win rates, mid 70s for 10 percent, 60 percent for 20 percent, 50 percent for 25, which makes sense because if you're holding a iron fly and you're trying to get that pristine target of 25 percent, which is our top end target, uh, you are going to have a lower win rate because you have to hold that significantly further through the day yeah. for a zero day trade. But this is the biggest yield for from a PNL standpoint. Is this 15 to 25 IVR, yeah. which is like, which makes sense because like it's not too high. Yeah, to where you're actually getting big moves. Yes, it's kind of it's 
inflated volatility yes. is like that kind of range. And then you see the you know IVR below that of 10 to 15 or below 10, that's low volatility. Like we are in a low volatility environment right now. Yeah. It makes sense that when you have like the 15 to 25 is, is a wider range of high to low than the, than the below 15 really is probably, you know, a VIX from 15 to 17 or 18. Sort yeah. Of thing. And the no management makes a lot of sense too, because yeah. iron flies with $10 wide wings in SPX, very narrow. Yes. Like these are, these are butterfly trades where you're placing them in the morning. And if you're not managing them, when a winner is on the table, you are asking for trouble down the road. Yeah. And, and the, the moves at the end of the day were relative to you know, how tight this range is. It goes, it, it becomes all or nothing. Yeah. You know, these, these profit targets of 10, 10% on a 10 point wide uh, iron fly, that might be, you know, 80 or 70 or 80 cents. You're probably doing this at, at a $7 or $8 credit on yep. opening. So it's, it's, you know, that's now it's nine dollars. Yeah, on a ten dollar wide. Yeah. So you know, you're looking for a small amount of profit, and you're you're churning through those positions. Whereas in the no management, a lot of it is probably going to max loss. Correct. Yeah. So yeah, in other words, if you, if I threw on an iron fly right now and I did nothing, I would need SPX to be within plus or minus eight plus or minus eight points of where we are right now. Yeah, and that's doesn't happen all that often. Yeah. So yes, with these trades especially narrow spread trades where you're covering a narrow range, you want to have some kind of target in there as a GTC order because as time passes, all you need for that to hit is just a movement through your strikes. Mm -hmm. And you can get that 10%, 20%, 25% best case scenario. But yeah, holding to expiration, doing nothing, uh, you need a lot of things to happen in a very specific way. Yep. Next one, looking at 40 Delta Iron Condors. 20 point wide wings. So these ones, if we were to just replicate it in uh, platform right now, very similar setup, like a 40 Delta for a zero day is still pretty close to the money. Yeah. Um, I'm like 10 points out of the money on either side for a 40 Delta and then 10 point wide wings ultimately brings you to a butterfly where it's a butterfly feel, but it's a wider range of, uh, outcomes so with a with a setup like this you're basically covering the expected move with break even mm -hmm. i think is the best way to put it so you have significantly higher win rates here 10 percent target so this this trade right now uh 20 wide wings in spx zero day looking at an eight dollar credit so similar credit to the first trade we looked at mm -hmm. we have a way wider break even range yeah uh because you're plus or eight Plus or minus eight points starts from your strikes that are out of the money, not at the money. Yeah. So much bigger win rate, 90% across the board, pretty much. 20% um, profit target, lower win rate, but uh, you know you, you can still see the, the mean PL is actually worse than the 10% target. So it's again speaks to the idea of if you're collecting premium and you're putting these on. Having a GTC order makes a lot of sense because if you place this right now at 9 a.m., if the market passes through this range at 11 a.m. or 12 p.m., yeah. you're going to hit your profit target of 10%. Most likely. Yes. Where if you leave it and do nothing, you're just at the mercy of the market. And again, you're, you're waiting for something to happen that has to happen very specifically. Yeah. I think just looking at both of these, the no management side of this is, is telling you that, you know, it. That juicy premium that you see on entry, you should be managing that quickly because yeah. a lot of these, you know, if you're holding them and you're doing no management, you know, a lot of these are going to are going to end up going against you, as you can see from the the mean P and L values being negative. I mean, that's telling you that the, a lot of those bi those trades are going to or close to max loss. Yeah, and. Uh of course, the worst performing scenario here is the IVR under 10. And that makes a lot of sense too, because when IV rank is really low, implied volatility is really low, you are right up against the stock price. You're not collecting a lot and anything can happen. We've seen 100 point moves in SPX or the E-minis when the VIX is at 12, 13, 14. So like 
you have to be waiting for these opportunities. And these, the best performing ones are in the IBR of 25 or higher and the IBR of 15, 25, still, still good. But basically you need some kind of volatility here. Next one, looking at 20 delta iron condors. So getting further out of the money, 20 point wide wings. So in this, in this scenario in SPX right now, you're looking at strikes that are 10 points further away than the previous example. Mm -hmm. And your strikes are basically at the expected move. So 20 delta strikes, you're, you're basically at the orange bar expected move plus minus. And uh, 20 point wide wings here would bring you to a credit of about $4 with a risk of 1600 on a zero day trade, if I were to put it on yeah. right now. So these are, you know, through the roof for 10% profit target, because again, if I'm collecting $4 and I put a target in at 40 cents, mm -hmm. I literally need the SPX to pass through 6,100 to 6,135 a couple hours from now. Yeah. And you really remove the outlier risk yeah. of holding it to expiration. Right. Like the worst thing that can happen here is I put this on and something happens in the market and it's just a reversal and it never comes back. Yeah. If that doesn't happen, you're probably going to be able to take 10% out of this. Um, but even the 20%, 25%, still strong marks here in terms of win rate. Um, and looking at the mean PNL, higher IV is going to help you a lot because higher IV means, in this case, not necessarily bigger credit. Mm -hmm. It means wider distance from the stock, from the market price, yeah. which gets you a stronger situation for, again, where is this market going to pass through my, my spreads after a couple hours pass? Yeah. I think all these as well show that, you know, you got to be, you got to be quick with these trades. Like yeah. a lot, you know, and the results from people that do in the YouTube chat, a lot of them are like, I placed this at 8 a.m. I took I'm out by 10. Yes. And then I'm done. Yes. And that's, you know, that's really the key here is that you can't, you can't look at the total uh, credit and expect to, you know, capture that day to day. You should be keeping realistic expectations, which, you know, we always talk about managing winning trades. This is another perfect example of it. Totally. So we'll hit you with some takeaways. As we look to refine our zero day profit taking, we're leaving no stone unturned. Examining trade performance by IVR at open revealed a few things. All the strategies and mechanics were considered, uh, did best in moderate IVR regimes and the high IVR too. Um, but longer term studies and longer term options, it seems like very high IVR was a bad sign for zero day profits. Um, and I think just the fact that like when you're doing a 45 day trade or a standard trade, we'll call it, mm -hmm. when you have really high IV rank, now you can get really far out of, of the money relative to the stock price. And you just need like the market to calm down a little bit and mm -hmm. all that tail premium gets collapsed just really, really aggressively. So makes sense. Yeah. Picking a profit target means balancing win rates and the size of winners with the relative merits mostly consistently regardless uh, of opening IVR. So when we looked at the first one, uh, the, the very binary butterfly trade where you're collecting a lot relative to risk, all the results are going to be very similar because you need, you know, you need very little movement. But mm -hmm. when you get into the more iron condor feel, it makes sense that you want that mid to high IV rank to get further from the market price. Zero day trading requires learning to act with speed, but there does not appear to be any need to complicate things by changing mechanics in response to volatility. So nice confirmation of uh, what we assume, but yeah, just like anything else, if you have a defined profit and you're leaving it on to get 20 cents out of it with $3 and 80 cents on the table of profit, you're Manage. doing yourself a disservice because yes. there are, are going to be scenarios where you lose all that money and then you get into the, the loss zone. 